Hi, Gary Stearman. Time once again for a, an update from Prophecy in the News. Uh, this is being made on Friday, uh, the 27th, for July the 30th. And I want to talk a little bit about the Middle East. Uh, we have, for years, if not decades, many of us studying the Bible have noted that uh, one of the signs of the fulfillment of prophecy in the Middle East would be uh, the ancient prophecies concerning Gog of the land of uh, Magog, featuring the territories of Meshech and Tibal, which uh, of course are the, uh, the ancient territories of what has come to be called Russia today. And of course, much prophecy talks about the northern invader. It talks about the strengthening of the northern invader, and that would be the invader who comes from the Caucasus Mountains and north. That, of course, would be Russia today. And prophecy says much about that. We have here from Debka file, <clears throat> big Russian fleet near Syria. Now, this uh, was a uh, was first dateline July 25th, but it, the story continues to build. Russian, uh, Western, and Arab forces. Uh, were piling up on Syrian borders uh, beginning uh, July 25th, that's last Wednesday, bringing closer a war confrontation which could spur the Assad regime into making good on its threat to use chemical weapons against quote-unquote external aggression. Based on this reading, Moscow added its voice uh, last Tuesday to that of U.S. President Obama, warning uh, Bashar Assad of Syria against using chemical weapons in view of, quote, its commitments under the International Convention it ratified prohibiting the use of poisonous gases as a means of warfare, end quote. And so we have this uh, little uh, uh, dialogue going on between Russia and Syria. Meanwhile, the uh, Russian fleet has poured out of the Black Sea uh, and out of the uh, North Sea area. <clears throat> come down through uh, the uh, Strait of Gibraltar into the eastern Mediterranean and, of course, uh, in Tartus, which is uh, a deep-water seaport on the coast of Syria, the Russian Navy now has a major base, including one nuclear aircraft carrier. Uh, everybody is getting ready. Now, how's Israel reacting to this? Well, this is from uh, July 26th. Uh, and this dateline comes through Debka file. Quote, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Finance Minister Yuval Steinitz are rightly using a necessary austerity package as a lever for getting the country uh, on track for a war economy without saying so. In other words, says Debka file, uh, Israel is quietly putting uh, the country on a war footing, which would be an austerity package uh, of uh, extreme, extreme means. That would include uh, raising taxes. That would include not only raising taxes, but uh, putting some goods beyond the, the public availability, uh, diverting uh, those goods instead to the armed forces. Uh, and uh, to continue this uh, dateline, July 26, they avoid discussing the consequences and duration of the new measures because they cannot tell how long a war, which they believe may be close, will last or how it will end. Talk about an understatement. Uh, Deb Kefile estimates that they are quietly building a 25 to 30 uh, billion dollar strategic financial reserve for a worst case scenario. And, and so now Israel is on a financial war footing in addition to having a unity government in place. And so day by day by day, we get closer and closer to what all of us have seen coming uh, for a very long time. In the meantime, we read from Debka file, the IDF <coughs> has now issued a report saying that Syri Syrian chemical uh, uh, rockets, that is uh, uh, medium-range rockets laden with sarin gas, VX gas, uh, even mustard gas, are cocked and primed and loaded and aimed at Israel. Uh, our President Obama has warned uh, Bashar Assad against making a tragic mistake. Senior military officers, to quote, referring to the Syrian Foreign Ministry statement, that Syria would use only chemical weapons against external aggression, 
found in it a direct threat by the Assad regime to turn those weapons against Israel. And so now you have Israel on a complete war footing. You have Israel uh, literally under the gun. That is to say, these, uh, these rockets loaded with uh, chemical and biological agents could be in Israel in a matter of minutes. And only uh, Israel's system, Iron Dome system, could defend them. And if there's a leak in that Iron Dome system, if something fails to protect them against uh, uh, a rocket assault, they could find themselves uh, uh, under a gas attack of major proportions in Tel Aviv, in central Israel. Uh, and uh, th that, of course, has, has been a matter of concern for a very long time. One other item in the Middle East uh, is taking place in Saudi Arabia. And you need to know this. Put this uh, uh, in your list of things going on in the Middle East as you study Bible prophecy. Uh, the, uh, the Dubai uh, Police Department has now warned of what it calls an international plot against the Gulf states. Now, Dubai is right on the Persian Gulf uh, alongside the United Arab Emirates. And uh, this uh, gentleman, whose name is uh, Chief um, Dahi Kalfant, took me a moment there to get his name, has warned that there is an international plot to overthrow the governments of Gulf Arab countries, saying the region needs to be prepared to counter any threat from Islamist dissidents in Syria and Iran. And to, to continue his quote, there is an international plot against Gulf states in particular and Arab countries in general. And this is pre-planned, he says, to take over our fortunes. In other words, to take over Arab oil in the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, Kuwait, and so forth. And of course, there have been a number of tries in the past uh, to do that. Uh, the the uh, uh, agreements between the United States and the United Arab Emirates have been so strong that very few people want to take them on. However, now, with the growing threat of the Muslim Brotherhood, it looks like uh, maybe some encroachment has been made. That's at least what this gentleman says, Dahi Kalfan, uh, who is one of the major figures there in Dubai. He says they're going to try to come and take our oil, they being the Muslim Brotherhood. So the Middle East right now is a bubbling, boiling pot of aggression from one end to the other, from Turkey all the way south to the United Arab Emirates, all the way east through Iran, and all the way west across North Africa, Egypt, Libya. It's, what can I say? There is so much agitation, and every bit of it was predicted in Scripture. Hmm. Well, keep looking up, everybody, because he's coming soon. <laughs>